Hello everyone, my name is Irina. Greetings from Ukraine City Tours. Today I am a guest of Svetlana Mucha, the leading matchmaker of Ukraine. Hello Svetlana. Hello Irina. Svetlana, tell me please, I know that you are a pretty famous person in the matchmaking business according on your subscribers on YouTube channel and Thank social you. media. And um, can you tell us, please, how the idea of um, uh, building uh, um, much ma international matchmaking agency was appeared? I hope you have time because I love talking about my business and I love talking about matchmaking. I believe I'm one of those rare people who have managed to turn their favorite hobby, their passion into their profession and into uh, the business of their life. Uh, to be honest, it all has happened by chance. Uh, more than 12 years ago, uh, when I was still in the university, uh, I was looking for a job where I can uh, uh, use my English skills and improve the language. And at that moment, I didn't know anything about dating business, uh, dating agencies or matchmaking. And, uh, I was uh, hired by a dating agency. Um, it was quite common, there were like pretty many agencies like that and uh, the agency has been working with uh, several big dating sites and uh, I was young, ambitious, uh, very active and uh, I have spoken good English and uh, German at that moment. Um, so uh, my duties were uh, translating during the dates and the experience itself itself was like uh, very, very, very deep and very useful. I always tell that I would never trade this experience for anything else. So uh, usually I was meeting a couple, a gentleman, an English speaking gentleman and a lady uh, at the date usually at the restaurant, uh, not so often in the street, especially in the summer for a long walk. And uh, I was translating for them. Uh, so I basically I was a third wheel uh, during the date uh, for like more than several thousand times for couples. And the experience, the experience was wonderful. First of all, I was meeting people from different cultures, from different countries. And uh, translating during the date is so different from translating, for example, some business negotiations. It is so intimate. It is like, I don't know, looking through the keyhole and uh, uh, watching uh, a couple, like holding their hands for the first time or kissing for the first time. And I have watched pretty many of those, like first time touching and first time kissing. I was there translating, but I was never watching. <laughs> <laughs> so I was working at the dating agency for a year and something, and I loved what, what I was doing. I have met so many wonderful ladies, so many wonderful gen gentlemen, but I was so irritated with the fact that uh, pretty often uh, after the first date, there was like never a second date or a third date. And for me, it was like a huge frustration. I was a perfectionist and still am. And uh, I wondered like, uh, why do sometimes people who from the very beginning are not the right match for each other actually meeting and wasting their time on the date if like during the first 15 minutes you can tell that there won't be a second date because they are like so different. Their perception of life, their ideas about relationship are so different, like opposite. And uh, I remember very well the first time uh, I have actually matched a couple. I didn't know the word matchmaking back then. I, ha I would learn it like in five or seven years from that moment. Um, I remember that day and uh, I often tell the, st the story during the interviews. It was winter. It was like really, really cold. Uh, it was in Kiev. I was meeting a gentleman in Berispol airport and uh, I was booked to translate their date later on. So we have met the gentleman with the driver, with the taxi driver, in the airport we took him to the hotel and uh, during all this trip he was telling me that uh, for almost a year he was corresponding with a lady and uh, he was so excited to finally meet her in person and uh, he flew over from United States, so it was like all in all like 15 hours trip uh, and this is a jet lag. I'm sure he was very tired, but he insisted on meeting her you know, right the day he has landed in Kiev. 
and he was very excited and uh, he told me a lot about her on our way from Burispo and with traffic jam like you know it can take lots of time to drive there so we came to the restaurant and we were waiting for her I have recognized her like uh, from the first moment because he has described her exactly like that like the hair color the smile uh, the way she was touching her hair I don't know how he has imagined uh, all that Skype was not popular back then so they have actually never seen each other uh, even on webcam oh, so on pictures they were just uh, corresponding back and forth and uh, they have started talking and after 10 minutes I could tell that uh, like there is no chemistry uh, like she worked in the hospital and uh, she was speaking about the hospital about her patients about uh, doctors some funny stories and uh, he was listening, he was asking questions, but uh, I could tell that it was not what he has expected to hear. And she later would tell me that uh, he was not um, that quirky, confident guy from the correspondence as she has imagined him to be. And after that date, and it lasted like a little more than one hour, they have just eaten some salads uh, and uh, they didn't even uh, order a wine or anything because like they both felt it, it was awkward, the date was awkward, I have been to so many dates, so you can tell it from the very beginning, you can feel it, and uh, when I was seeing him off to the hotel, like, I, I could touch his disappointment, like, you know, it was uh, tangible, like, you could easily tell that he was so disappointed, he was heartbroken, uh, like, he has waited one year to fly yeah, over Yeah, the man here. spent uh, uh, one year, raised uh, one year of his life. You know, uh, now people can tell that, oh, she was not modest. She was a nice lady. Like, uh, the next day at the agency, I have met her. I went to the agency, like, to uh, sign the papers that I did the translation and to find out about the next couple I would translate. And I have noted that lady, she was uh, chatting to another interpreter and she was telling that, oh, unfortunately, like, he was not the one. Like, in the correspondence, he was one person. In real life, he was another. Such a disappointment. And she was looking forward. So she was looking forward too. But I felt really sad about the entire situation. From the very beginning, these two people, you could tell that they were not like the right match. Like, um, and I felt so sad for him because he was stuck in that Kiev, in the ice cold Kiev for an entire week all along. So you know what I did? Uh, I called him and I told him that uh, uh, he has no reasons to trust me. Uh, he, like he barely knew me like he saw me during the translation and I was very young at that time and I've told him that uh, I believe I knew a lady for him the right lady who might be the match and I remembered her because I have filled in uh, the questionnaire with her and the, at those times uh, it was not called questionnaires like ladies came to the agency and sometimes where there were, when there were not enough managers like uh, we were filling in the forms with them like name, age, stuff like that and I have started talking with her like we had free coffee in the office so usually <laughs> you start talking with everyone so i've told him that i knew the right lady for him and uh, if he trusted me i would introduce them and to my huge surprise he told me that he was interested to meet her because basically he has nothing to do in kiev and he couldn't change his ticket so quickly so i have found the phone number of that lady i have called her and I've told her pretty much similar story that she has no reason to trust me and probably she doesn't remember me. I was the girl she has filled in that form with and we had mm -hmm. coffee. But I believe I knew the perfect guy for her. And to my surprise, she has agreed to meet. And they have met and you could tell from the very first moment they uh, lay, laid their eyes on each other that there was chemistry and they like each other. And they have spent uh, the entire week uh, all days after her work in the evening like he was meeting her right uh, by her office and they were spending time together and they got married this was the first couple i introduced and i really like the process i really fell in love with the result you know when you introduce people and you see that it is working uh there is a couple they didn't they didn't know each other and wow now there is a couple and you've held them meeting and um I have tried to spread these ideas in that office. Nobody was very happy about that because the entire idea of that business, that dating agency was that uh, people have to correspond, then they have to meet. Uh, if it's not working, 
they have to correspond again with new people. So it was like a never-ending process. It's not bad, it's just I didn't find it efficient enough. So for many more times I was breaking rules again and I was introducing people from the base. So when I was meeting a client and I could tell that he has serious intentions, he wants to meet someone, but it's not, it's obviously not working with the lady in front of him. I was telling him like, I think I know the right girl. <laughs> and then my boss has found out and I was fired. Oh, and that was the best thing that could happen to me. Uh, to be honest, uh, right away I was headhunted by another agency and the year my boss told me that you can do what you want, like do what you are doing, what you are doing in that agency, go through the base, introduce people, like create couples, spread love. And uh, at the very beginning, it sounded perfect to me, like perfect opportunity. I have worked at that other company for about a year. I have matched, I have matched couple there, so we've made couple there. I don't remember at the moment how many, uh, but still, you know, uh, there were limitation. There were limitations and um, I was not 100%, uh, uh, I didn't agree for 100% uh, with the rules of that company. So there were like so many things that could be adjusted and could be changed. And I wanted those changes. So uh, I knew that I want to start my company, my matchmaking company, and I will do it my way. I won't waste time on this correspondence. I didn't believe in those charts. I will introduce people traditionally offline, classy, and uh, I will get to know each and every client. Uh, I will attract good quality people, people with whom I will feel comfortable working, like my people. And I will create beautiful couples. And uh, this is what still uh, inspires me. This is what makes me uh, going and working and uh, improving my business for the last 10 years and it would be 10 years in September 17th since I have found uh, Diola.com. So uh, this is how it all started. It started with a dream to make an uh, image making company uh, the way I was seeing it back then in cold Kiev as a student and uh, still every day I have ideas and I see how I can make it even better. But uh, uh, you created uh, international matchmaking agency and it's quite innovative even for uh, matchmaking institute in New York because uh, I knew that uh, you are invited uh, to read uh, a lecture there, right? And uh, they want uh, you to tell uh, uh, more about uh, uh, this uh, special uh, offshoot uh, international matchmaking business. To be honest, uh, the entire percep uh, perception of uh, the international dating market uh, in the West, it's like so different from how it is actually. So usually when I go to conference like iDate conference or Matchmaking Institute or European dating conference and when I'm speaking there, people are surprised because in their mind, international dating market, it's all like Melody Brides, like, you know, stuff. And there is a catalog, beautiful ladies in bikini and uh, guys can just put their finger and uh, choose. It doesn't work like that. I strongly believe that love knows no borders and uh, you can choose uh, the best from each culture, from Ukrainian culture, from American culture, from Russian culture, from Polish culture, and you can bring it to your marriage and make it uh, even brighter, uh, even more colorful, more interesting. Uh, you can choose to do that. And uh, I strongly believe that international babies, mixed babies are the cutest. And from the birth, uh, they have that advantage. They will speak several languages, which is interesting. We do some local matchmaking as well, which for Ukraine is also pretty innovative. But international is super interesting. First of all, you mix different cultures. You meet people from different countries and cultures. And well, uh, it's not a secret that in Ukraine uh, we are kind of short of men. And, uh, but if you will go to New York matchmaker, they will tell you that, oh, we don't have enough men. Like we need uh, uh, more, more men for our ladies. Uh, well, uh, I love the idea that now with the globalization, with everything, like the world is getting smaller. And uh, nowadays, if you start dating someone from another culture, 
uh, people see it more as an advantage. So yes, uh, usually when we go to international conferences, uh, uh, we are always exotic. We are always interesting, we are always different, and uh, I'm proud of it. I'm proud that now in Ukraine, finally, people know the word matchmaking, and many dating agencies have started placing the word matchmaking uh, on their websites. Well, it's, uh, it's kind of, you know, it's flattering to be a trendsetter to set trends. And I hope we will keep going and we will surprise our clients, our followers, our colleagues, our haters as well. Thank you for being with us. So I hope we will surprise and we will keep surprising and inspiring them. And Svetlana, I can see so many regalia and uh, awards uh, uh, in your office. Uh, do you participate in some kind of competition in matchmaking business or? Yes, uh, we have won the first one in 2016. It was only two years ago. It was iData Awards and I have won the best matchmaker of the year. And for us, uh, it was like it was really a memorable year because first of all, we are the first international matchmaking company that actually applied for that competition and we won. And I remember very well that while I was sitting there in the audience and I was looking at the list of people I was competing against, I was like, wow, like that lady from Great Britain, she's in the business like for 20 years and that lady has been on Canadian TV and they are in there. And I was like thinking, and we are like from Ukraine. People didn't even know where Ukraine is. I had a funny situation at one conference there was on my page, they have a place, it was written like Svetlana Mukha and then uh, there was it written you are and uh, there was a flag not from Ukraine but uh, from this African <laughs> Republic so they have mixed it and people were asking me like oh, why are you white <laughs> like really <laughs> well it was in US I know that in US people love learning everything about US and many of them are not interested uh, in going and exploring outside so no offense is uh, taken so yes we participate uh, greatly and uh, it is my social project. Uh, I love breaking this justice that uh, Ukraine is the only the country of male or the brides. Uh, Dioli is a proof that there are like uh, high quality matchmaking companies uh, that uh, we compete not only in Ukraine, actually we don't compete here much, we compete uh, with Western market and uh, we have friends, we have colleagues there and we have earned uh, their respect, not only respect of our clients, the respect of the industry. This year in 2018 uh, we have finally won um, the award again that I did for the best product design and people who know my brand, my brands, because we have several brands, we have brands for ladies as well, they know how crazy we are about branding and uh, like perfectionism you know you have to be infected with it to work in the only I believe uh, because it is everywhere it starts with our website with the looks of our team uh, with the looks of our office with the cookies that we present with like Valentine cards that we are working on so we were so proud that finally in my opinion, a beautiful brand <laughs> has won and uh, we are happy that this award right now it waits for us in New York because unfortunately this year I was not able to travel there. I had clients over here to match. But hopefully in spring I will pick it up and bring it home to Ukraine. I hope the award will like it in Ukraine. <laughs> Uh, Svetlana, can you tell us, please, uh, what uh, um, make you so special uh, uh, among other uh, competitors? Um, worldwide, in Ukraine. Worldwide. Uh, as, I have, uh, as I have already told, we are unique. We are the international matchmaking company. And by saying international, we are truly international. We have clients from United States, from Canada, from UK, from uh, China, from Singapore, from Australia, from Japan, uh, from all around Europe and uh, from Africa as well. And uh, 
Usually when I travel abroad almost in every European country there is a couple that I have matched. So it is nice to be meeting my ex-clients and there is no such thing like an ex-client because they are still your clients and we feel so happy when for example we see photos somewhere in Instagram or when they send us pictures that they have a baby or they have moved to a new house. By the way this weekend one of our couples they have announced that they have decided to move together. So oh. they're going to live together and we're like so happy and entire weekend like everyone was going gaga with the news. Uh, so I think this is uh, this international scene really puts us uh, into a special light in the industry. Also I'm very passionate about what I'm doing and uh, I'm young, I'm proud of that. At many conferences people ask me like how can you have 10 years of experience and being so young? Well, I have started young and also in Ukraine it's, it's not uh, a secret that uh, most of Ukrainian ladies look younger their age. You know that there is something in the air, in the water. <laughs> in the <laughs> jeans. Yes, and uh, I believe like the entire land spread this special gene that Ukrainian ladies look so hot. Uh, so I hope I have answered your question. <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, can you name, please, uh, pros and cons uh, of your profession? Okay, I will start uh, with the positive side. Uh, I'm a very positive person. Uh, like, if you want to be in the matchmaking business, you have to be an optimist and you have to work on it every day. Um, I love seeing results. For example, like I've told you, this weekend uh, one of our couples have decided to move together. And there, were, there have been like so many little scenes uh, while they were uh, working in this direction. For example, in summer they wanted to have a vacation together. And the gentleman, he is in the, in the military and he is in his mid thirties. And uh, due to his profession, he had this very strong character. And the girl, let's call her Anna, um, she had this... Uh, mild character, she's very feminine, she's fun, she's sweet and they were planning this vacation he told her like you should bring the umbrella with you because the weather will be like not so good and bring some comfortable shoes like she's a Ukrainian girl of course she had a suitcase full of shoes with high heels <laughs> like that was comfortable shoes in her opinion some dresses, shorts, skirts and she was not ready for hiking and he was so upset with that, like in his mind, she has decided not to take his advice. So she, it was a disrespect in his mind, because he told her, he has recommended her to take comfortable shoes and umbrella, and she has neglected that. So in his mind, it was like, oh, she is not going to listen to my advices. How can I build relationship with someone uh, who doesn't take me serious? In her mind, it was, wow, I'm going on a vacation with a man of my dream. I have to look my best, I have to have the shoes, I have to have the red dress. She was not thinking that while well, hiking it won't be very hot to wear those stilettos and to hike <laughs> like that. So you see from this very little misunderstanding uh, this wonderful relationship it could have stopped at that moment. So I have made them both look at the situation from the different perception. Uh, to change uh, the angle from where you're looking at it. So I have explained to him that it was not like the act of disrespect. She was not thinking about it that way. She was thinking that, wow, the man of my dreams will be meeting me in the country of my dreams. We will have a, a vacation, a super vacation, her dream vacation. So she wanted to look her best. And uh, she knew that her best she will look in that short dress and wearing those high heels. And she was doing that for him. It was her way to show him that I want to be desirable. I want you to like me. I want to be the most beautiful girl for you. So he has understood that that stupid umbrella was not the act of the disrespect. He bought the umbrella there. They bought sports shoes. So it, was, mm -hmm. it worked out really well. And I'm so proud of them that uh, they are moving together. They are a wonderful couple. Guys, if you have recognized yourself in the story, greetings from, you, uh, from Ukraine, from Kharkov. We love you dearly. So, uh, when I see results, I think this is uh, the biggest advantage. This is what inspires me. This is what inspires the entire office. Of course, there is like the dark side. The dark side, as I call it, 
Uh, we work with such thin material, with such specific material, with such intimate material. We work with love. And you know, um, when you tell a person that, okay, uh, in his profession that, oh, your English skills are not so good, or for example, you can't cook, um, well, you can defend the person or he can think about it like, okay, I can't cook, but I can sing really well. Uh, but when you tell a person that, oh, you can't flirt, mm -hmm. it can be a problem. When you work with such a uh, fragile material as feelings, it is so easy to offend a person and people usually get emotional. So I see everything. I see tears, I see ang anger and uh, sometimes you have to be this buffer between clients, between female and male clients and it sucks. But you have to do it because you see the goal, you see two people uh, that can create a wonderful relationship together, can be really happy together. And due to some little facts, uh, they can neglect this opportunity and you have to do your best to bring them there. And sometimes uh, you have to play the bad cop, sometimes you have to play the good cop and it's emotionally uh, very exhausting. Do you have to be a good uh, psychologist, I guess? I think so, but uh, I believe to be like a really good matchmaking, yes, you need to have some theoretical knowledge. And if you will look at my table, like the, uh, over there, you will see all the books. I'm constantly reading and attending master class, usually in the West, in Ukraine, we don't have many like of them. And I'm teaching, uh, I'm teaching matchmaking for people who start their business and for people who have been there in, for a while. For example, at I date uh, for Eastern European market, we did a big master class, and uh, I learned a lot from people who attend from their problem. I remember m myself, and I have just started. So I believe you have to be a good observer, and you have to really love people. If you don't love people, you can't be in this profession because you can't do it just for money. And uh, what are the main requirements? Uh, uh, for people who want to work in a uh, uh, matchmaking field? Uh, you have to love people, as I have told you. You have to understand that stress uh, would follow you daily. But it is a good stress, you know, this work, it's never again. Singles tend to make similar mistakes, but each couple, they are unique. And they teach you something. You have to be very patient. People can be stubborn especially when they have been single for a long time. And you have to uh, ruin those walls, break the walls, and like Miley Cyrus, I can't, uh, I, I, can't, uh, <laughs> I can't believe I'm quoting Miley Cyrus, but she's like that, that wrecking ball that uh, crashing the walls. So sometimes we have to be like those wrecking balls, crashing the walls and crashing the habits and teaching singles the new habits. Uh, so, for example, uh, we had a couple not so long ago and uh, in my opinion, they are like super cute. They are like one of my favorite couples. Uh, but uh, in that couple, the gentleman, he is not traditionally handsome. And some of my managers, especially new managers, they were like, oh, we are going to have a problem with him. Like, uh, he has such exotic looks, the girls won't like him. But he had such an outgoing personality. And I've told them that if we will present the personality in the right light, it will overshine like the looks and trust me, girls will find him hot. And it happened like that. Like he had several dates with several ladies and all ladies wanted to date him. And uh, one of the girls stood out right after, after the first date and they have started dating and uh, I hope there would be an engagement this year, but I keep my fingers crossed. Uh, so, uh, for example, that couple, it has taught my new managers that it is always deeper than the looks. You have to, you have, to have intuition uh, to look at singles and tell that, for example, uh, it's not like you see it or um, there's there is more behind those blue eyes or uh, you have to adjust this and that. And of course, some theoretical knowledge is uh, we have a psychologist in our team that helps. Thank you. And Lana, can you describe your usual working day in the office? Hmm. Um, today is crazy because today we don't have internet in the office for like, we didn't have it like for three hours. 
so it was like kind of a disaster but a good thing is right now i am talking to you and nobody is calling me on skype so usually in uh, my entire day uh, i don't cut it into working and private usually it starts either with the language class i'm learning languages all the time right now i'm learning chinese because we work with Chinese market and I want to understand my clients better. So it's already your first language? Uh, yeah, kind of. <laughs> or, or I go to gym and then usually I'm in the office. I'm either conducting interviews with my clients or with potential clients or with current clients or I'm working on dating tips for articles. Uh, we have a big blog at Dioli and also at our YouTube channel and right now I try to educate ladies more. We have two big projects for ladies, so I try to blog in Russian more. So I try to devote several hours on articles every day. Um, I spend a lot of time on texting because my clients have to ask me, like uh, last week uh, by Skype, I have actually helped a client to choose an engagement ring for his fiance. So he wanted it to be perfect and he said that uh, I have to ask you and I'm like, okay, that's like such a pleasant thing to choose uh, uh, an engagement ring and it's not the first time I was choosing it. Uh, on Friday I was helping our female client uh, choose a present for St. Valentine for her boyfriend, our male client. So it's never the same, you know, today I'm doing this interview with you. Um, it's never the same. This is what I like about my job. There is no routine. Um, usually when I have a free minute, uh, I do my home task uh, with uh, Chinese or with other language or I'm reading something and I try to work on my PhD. I try to find time for that. It's like so complicated, but I try to do it. You are a very busy person, I can see. Thank you very much uh, for finding time for the interview. And last question, Svetlana, could you share, please, uh, some confession? A confession? And confession from the matchmaker. Okay, uh, my confession would be, hmm, uh, I don't know if I can say it in the video, but we are already planning our 10th uh, anniversary. Diola.com is turning 10 years old. And I was with, uh, meeting with the organizer of this celebration and uh, I know her very well. She planned my wedding, so I trust her. And she told me that like, oh, uh, you are preparing uh, this birthday of your company <laughs> more accurately that you are planning your wedding. <laughs> like you pay so much attention to the details. And we were discussing with Katerina, with our executive, like uh, in which style we wanted to happen, like our 10th uh, anniversary. And you know, we have decided to do it in the style of Fifty Shades of Grey movie. Really? Yes. <laughs> How interesting. So it's going to be hot. Are we invited? Sure. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your answer. It was uh, really uh, nice uh, to, to see you, to talk with you. And uh, I wish you and your agency prosperity and uh, uh, grateful clients and as much as possible matches. Thank you.